Good morning, everyone. At this morning service, we honor the Navy, Coast Guard, and Maritime veterans that have died and are buried at sea. And there are thousands of them. Just at Pearl Harbor alone, there's over 2,000. And then at the 9 o'clock service, we will honor the veterans that are buried from Merrimack in all town and local graveyards. <clears throat> On the 30th day of May, 1868, was designated for the purpose of strewing flowers or otherwise decorating graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, hamlet, churchyard, and seas in the land. In this observance, no form of ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will in their own way arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. We are organized comrades as our regulations tell us, for the purpose, among other things, of preserving and strengthening those kind and fraternal feelings which have bound together the soldiers, sailors, and marines, and maritimes, and coast guard, who united to suppress the late rebellion. What can aid more to assure this result than cherishing tenderly the memory of our heroic dead? If our eyes grow dull, if our other hands slack, and other hearts grow cold in this solemn trust, ours shall keep it well as long as the light and warmth of life remain in us. We will have an opening prayer by Legion member Judy Reyes. Almighty God, we bow our heads in honor and memory of all those who in past wars paid the ultimate sacrifice that we might enjoy governing our own land according to our own laws and by our own people. We remember not only those who left their homes never to come back again, but also mothers in whose windows hang a gold star and the tens and thousands of wives who said goodbye one last time. And for the children whose parents never got to hold their sons and daughters again. Lord God, be with us, lest we forget the noble efforts of those who voluntarily consented to fight for our country, to maintain order and protect our country from terrorism and our way of life. Lord, we pray for those children who are left parentless and those who must cope with a parent much unlike the one they knew before they went to war. We pray for peace in Jesus' name. Amen. I would now like to introduce our state representative, Lenny Mera, and he's going to say a few words at this time. He's a busy guy today. He's leaving here, going to Georgetown, after Georgetown, West Newbury. So we're happy to have him here this morning with us. Let's give him a big hand, please. Thank you, Roger. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's an honor to be here. I really want to, I appreciate you giving me the the honor of speaking on this very important day. 
I've um, never given a Memorial Day speech, and I'm happy to see so many people turn out for it. As I was looking at other speeches people had made and, and quotes, the quote that kept coming up quite often was uh, one by John F. Kennedy, uh, who once said that a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors and the men it remembers. That's what today is all about. As some of you may know, and as Roger alluded, uh, the first Memorial Day was not called Memorial Day. It's believed to have been a parade between, with freed slaves and Union soldiers, uh, marching to Charleston, South Carolina in 1865. Waterloo, New York is, uh, however, considered the official birthplace of Memorial Day because it was observed there on May 5th, 1866, when John Murray and General John A. Logan called on all communities to honor the war dead every year. Logan was impressed with how the South had honored its fallen Confederate soldiers for years. And in 1868, Logan, who was the head of a prominent veterans group called the Grand Army of the Republic, issued a proclamation day that Decoration Day be observed nationwide. And the date chosen was May 30th because it did not coincide on the anniversary of any particular battle. Even so, many Southern communities do not want to honor Decoration Day because of lingering resentment in the Civil War. So the alternative name, Memorial Day was brought up. It wasn't commonly used until about World War II, but then federal law recognized the holiday as Memorial Day in 1967. And so today, we remember and honor the American soldiers, ordinary men and women who died while in military service. Now, in addition to those memories, we also want to remember a promise that President Lincoln had made to, as he put it, to care for him who shall have been born the battle, and for his widow, and for his orphan. So it's not enough. It's not only that we remember the fallen once a year. We must also remember every day the widows, widowers, fathers and mothers, brothers, sisters, and children. So as we go out to our cookouts and picnics and our other celebrations today, we should always consider the empty seat at the dinner table, the smaller gathering at Thanksgiving, and the sacrifices that the fallen have made to make all of this possible for all of us. In this world, terror will not rest, violence will not sleep, and evil will not die. But if we honor and remember those who have served, then compassion will prevail, justice will triumph, freedom will reign. We owe it to the heroes that died and the loved ones left behind to make sure that that their stock. We owe it to the heroes that died and the loved ones. We owe it to the heroes that died and the loved ones left behind to make sure that their sacrifices are honored and their service to this nation will always be honored. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now have a musical selection by our bagpiper.
by the way, our bagpiper is James Quinn, commander, the U.S. Navy. We thank him for helping out today. The reason we do not have the uh, Pentucket Band uh, this year is because of the bridge problems and safety factors as far as them having to get back for the uh, West Newbury Parade and the bridge, ha uh, the bus having to go other routes well over 25, close to 30 minutes to get back there. So we thank uh, our bagpiper for volunteering his services. We'll now read the honor roll of the Navy, Coast Guard, and Maritime deceased. Everett H. Metcalf, Roderick Gillis, Melvin Gibbs, James Murphy, H.P. Arbacom, John Bryan, John Evans, Edward Sherman, Bernard Burbick, Arthur Clark Jr., James Lee, Harold Clark, F. Merton Kate, Cecil Earl, Earl George Brooks, Herbert Bailey, Paul Shorts, Dorothy Thomason, Paul Buck, Charles Davis, John Roberts, James Schiavone, Joseph Patton, Dr. Daniel Means, Harold Lord, Junius Meadows, John Flynn, Agnes Clark, R.N., Norman Leahy, David Knorr, Joseph Casey, William Colasano, Robert Streeter, Antonio Delache, George Lay, George Sutherland, Pearly Hargraves, Jr., Joseph Gamlin, Arthur Stewart, George Gilson, Erdwin Tamek, Kenneth Hartford, Charles Prescott, Randolph Peasley, Joseph Porter, Philip Kimball, Daniel George, Jr., Civil War veteran, George Leahy, Robert Stewart, Charles Stiles, Fred Spencer, Sr., Walter Kachuk, Adelbert Buzzell, Robert Gilday, Herman Fortin, Almer Stewart, Walter Killiam, Leo Goodrow, Charles Zink, Edward Streeter, John Sargent, Richard Harrison, Kenneth Lubston, David Merritt, Philip Y, John Stewart. Donald E. Mansell, Charles Ernest Sandy Jr., Francis X. Sheehy, James E. Kelly, Robert G. Burbeck, H. Emery Sawyer, Lloyd Buzzell, Dennis Ovid, Wallace G. Layton Jr., Francis D. Varney, Carl G. Olson, Norman Connor, James Arthur, Olus Jr., Kenneth McDonald, Larry Meany, William Early, Warren Hoyt, James V. Canley, Helen Ann Allen, James H. Christie, Richard T. Smith, Robert L. Whittem, Leonard O'Brien, Ira J. Elliott, Fred L. Spencer, Jr., William Beck, Carol E. Twist, Edward C. Jasley, Roland E. Noel, James A. Janvrin, John C. Smith, Robert E. Stanley, C. Robert Hart, Egan Emery, Jr., Paul Gill, 
Kenneth, J. William, Harold, E. Wallace, Zella, Buzzle, <clears throat> Harold, Jimmy, Hume, Thomas, Joe, Donovan, S. Anthony, Govea, <coughs> George, Adar, Norman, Brody, Bernard, Bailey, Charles, W. Campbell, Jr., Robert, L. McDonald, Harvey, Cole, Bernard, Marty, Hume, Richard, F. Amazy, Morris, Carey, Thomas, K. Davis, Sr., Paul, J. Mitchell, Walter, J. Roby, Gordon, Spinney, George, W. Merritt, Robert, D. McDougall, Robert, C. Kalman, Frank, D. Atwood, John, E. Flynn, Henry, J. Castine, George, L. Pittman, Forrest, Bud, Lavallee, Elmer, Grant, Jr., Harold, Arbor, William, W. Hurley, William, F. Menslich, Edward, A. Cottrell, Jr., Robert, G. Casaza, Emerson, C. Simpson, Norman, Gunner, Sandy, Gerald, M. Hargrave, Henry, J. Seymour, III, Peter, McCarthy, Velma, Spencer, Charles, Quinn, Paul, H. Hartwell, Jr., Austin, H. Dow, William, H. Whiting, Jr., Arthur, H. Duplessis, Sr., John, E. Starburn, Albert, Butlin, Roland, E. Potter, Jr., Rudolph, G. Pasto, Alan, J. Passick, I know I had the uh, bagpiper down for one musical, but I'm going to ask him if he would uh, have play another uh, song for us or mu uh, musical uh, selection for us. Firing squad, come to the ready.
Ready? Aim. Fire. Ready? Aim. Fire. Ready? Aim. Fire. Present arms. Hand salute. Uh, now the audience participation. You are all given, uh, or most of you are given copies of the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, I'm going to try, I have a musical tape here that plays the, uh, the music. And although I'm not a singer, I will get us started. See if I can uh, start the tape. Everybody sings, what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright skies through the pale. Present arms, hand salute. Empires we watched were so gallant. long as you didn't pay attention to my voice, we will have a closing prayer. And I just drew a blank on Father's name, so he'll present himself. <laughs> the priest from the Nativity Church, Father George. Uncover. Last week I had the opportunity to watch the uh, the DVD, uh, the 
film Les Miserables, which, as you may know, is a, a novel by the same title written by Victor Hugo many years ago after the fall of the Napoleonic era. And uh, during the DVD, I was really struck by one of the songs that Marius, the actor, sang. And it was titled, Empty Chairs and Empty Tables. He was mourning the death of friends who had died in many of the civil unrest in France at the time many friends had died, and he mourned empty chairs, empty tables. And so let us pray. Dear Lord, we're here today to honor the sons and daughters of our community, people who lived here once and were part of a family, they are someone's son, someone's daughter. They had a chair around a family table. They had a chair and a desk in a classroom. They had a chair around the cafeteria table. They had a chair, or in church we call it a pew, at the communion table. Lord, as we honor these men and women who left us empty chairs and empty tables, as they went from here to serve our country and gave their lives so that we may stand here and live in freedom, we need to be constantly reminded of this gift of freedom won at such a price, and of, the, of those who gave their all to make sure future generations continue to know life in a free, democratic society. Remembering those who made this ultimate sacrifice is only half the task. Lord, we ask your blessing as we carry their memories, their love, honor, and duty forward to future generations that will live in our community, those who sit in their chairs at tables. Help us to make our children aware of who these men and women were, what they did, and why they did it. To do anything less would be a disservice to their sacrifice and their memories. Lord, we ask your divine assistance in accomplishing the works of love and gratitude. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Father. We will now take a short break, and we will have a uh, 9 a.m. service to honor the rest of the uh, veterans. And uh, we, our guest speaker at the service is your new uh, town uh, selectman, Harold Lloyd. And that will start at 9 o'clock. Thank you for coming to this service.